Yeah. It's nice to hear. I'm used to, I'm like so busy with antagonists lately that it's nice. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Me too. Maybe it's something in the air, but no, seriously, my husband loves you. Um, he's the one who found you on YouTube and um, introduced me to you. And so you're a household fixture here. <laughs> yeah, big time. You've helped me so much. And um, then I went to Atlanta and saw you there. Yeah. So you're, you're awesome. I'm a hu huge supporter, both of us. Awesome. <sighs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So for anybody that's going to watch the video, um, I'll just say that Teal is Teal Swan now, formerly Teal Sp uh, Scott is my favorite spiritual teacher right now, um, of, hands down. So um, she has a really unique way of articulating a really good message. Uh, so <clears throat> your new website is tailswan.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so um, I'm also reading your book right now, uh, The Sculptor in the Sky, amazing book. And I cannot wait to get the one on self-love. Mm -hmm. Because I know that I could use more of that in my life, you know. So, um, so anyway, so I'm in real estate, and um, how easy? Do you want to know a secret? Yeah, I have my real estate license. Do you? Yes. Oh, that's so. <laughs> no way! Did you just yes. get it, or? No, I got it like 2007. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Have you ever sold or? Yeah, for like twice, and I decided it was, t I hated the business. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, it's a very tough, that's why I'm not giving up, because I want to integrate being yourself. And who knows, maybe I'm going to end up mentoring. That's what I'm doing now. So, I don't know. Maybe we can find a way to change that, you know, because it's sales, salesy. Right? Yep. Yes. So what would this is great? I didn't. I did not know that. So um, I think that I think that the real estate license was worth it just for the amount that I saved in my own purchase. Yeah. I sort of laughed about that with people to begin with. I was like, you know, real estate business is a, for a very select type of personality, and um, even for somebody who doesn't feel that way, I feel like. I, yeah, I completely wouldn't have known what I was doing, and so. Yeah. I made a very smart purchase based on going to school. <laughs> oh, good for you. I didn't, so go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that I didn't, but, you know, it was the timing. But, um, yeah, and so um, so you saved a lot. Yes. Effort. Yeah, good. And so you'll probably make out good when you sell it. Yes. Nice, nice. So, yeah, so I think... Um, I know I'm trying to um, bring a more spiritual, I'm trying to just be a one life. It's one. It's one life. It's not, you know, how to bring, well, that's the first question. How, how can business owners express themselves fully, not just real estate agents, but anybody in business for themselves, entrepreneurs? I know for me that I can't stand being behind a desk from nine to five. I feel like I'm, I've tried that and like, I want to kill myself, yep. basically, <laughs> just to throw it out there. So, um, yeah, so how can we express ourselves, you know, fully spiritually when dealing with business, I guess, is that that's the first question. It's tough, I know. Mm. Or not. <laughs> More it's that what my suggestion is not easily done. It's that in order for you to to integrate your own spirituality with your business or your own self with your business you have to stop catering yourself towards an audience which is like business 101 is figure out the customer and cater to the customer mm -hmm. so in order to integrate yourself into a business we're playing it completely backwards mm -hmm. but some of the most successful people on this planet they just assume that they're awesome and they put themselves out there unapologetically and Interestingly enough, because of that vibration they hold, there's total approval for it when it happens. So, I would say get yourself away from trying to cater yourself to the audience because you're never gonna you're never gonna please everyone. 
And as a business owner, you figure this out very quickly. What one person likes, the other person freaking hates. And, you know, so if you change yourself, the first person hates it. So you end up in this position where you really have no other option but to satisfy your own intentions, to satisfy your own self, and to move forward in the world with your own gifts exactly. and whatever you want to bring to people. And I think a lot of business owners are super afraid, thinking that if they do that, that their pool of resources and people are going to just vanish. But the reality is, what what better life would there be than you completely fully expressing yourself without worrying about the client and realizing that the clients that vibrate with that will come to you? You know, it's so interesting that you say that because right before this interview, I wrote down a few questions that just came to me. And one of them was what to do when a customer is not a vibrational match. Right? And like, I refer them out. <laughs> but I mean, basically, it's I'm teaching agents how to just be themselves and therefore people will just automatically come to them that is a good fit, right? Completely. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand also that if we're experiencing someone, they're a vibrational match to us. They're either a vibrational match based on something positive or something we're resisting. Mm -hmm. So, so like we don't need to worry about people not being a vibrational match to us. If we're, if we're experiencing them, they are. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right. Oh my god. That's good. Yeah, so like it's very and it's very likely that you see we call it not a vibrational match, but it is is I don't like the fact that they're mirroring my shadows, but they're a match to us. A lot of these un unenjoyable clients are a match to us because of the fact that we are resistant to some aspect of ourselves or self-conscious about some aspect of ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm <clears throat> or maybe maybe even even worse than that. Like I watch this with a lot of agents where specifically where a lot of agents are super super money driven. That's the reason that they got in the business in the first place, let's just be honest, right? Mm -hmm. So they get into this business of money, they really want to make money and so they want to close that deal as desperately as possible. And so they attract the clients that are the most fickle. Mm -hmm. That's why they're a match to those clients, because it's like they need money and that, that sort of lack, that absence there is a, is a focus and so it's a point of attraction. So if I'm focusing on on the fact that I don't have money and I need it, that sort of lack mentality, that void is going to attract clients to me who who change their mind a lot, who go in and then back out. <laughs> wow, it's so true and I've been that person where I, where I was driven by money years ago. I mean, in operating from a desperate place, learning now that the law of attraction, you're a mirror and you're going to mirror back, right? Yep. So, but it's it's so powerful to be on the other end of the spectrum now, and that's the message that I want to portray. portray you yeah, know? but the, the most important part is how do we get there without having to have our physical circumstance change? Because most new agents are not in a position where they're making you know hundreds of thousands a year. So how do I go right. from this, this place of needing money, which I do, to a place of of like uh, you know abundance to a place where I don't care whether this closes or not to till I don't care whether this person decides to fire me or not. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what this interview is about. <laughs> so if you if you could elaborate, I'm trying to like I'm looking at these questions, but then I'm thinking like I'm just gonna go where the conversation goes, right? Yes. <laughs> you must get that a lot. Can I just make sure it's recording because I'm psycho and I mm -hmm. don't want to screw anything up? Okay, it's recording. Um. Okay, so can you elaborate on that? Like, how do you get somebody to, uh, to, to shift their perception that is in that space of desperation, a new agent, I'm hungry, I need money, it's my job? You expand your horizons. This is difficult because most people who are agents have completely solidified their mind in terms of abundance to include only this job. So they think that their money is completely dependent upon their client. That's, that's not only a powerless space to be, but it also is limiting the universe to bringing you abundance. The reality is, agents out there, yeah, you might have a major, major ability for sales, but the reality is you have a whole lot of gifts which are of value, and in this world, value is representative by money. So here I am, this person who is a well, wellspring of talents. Most of them I take advantage of, because let's just be honest, most of us have no idea what they are. When you take them for granted because they are so integral to your nature, most of us are not aware of our major talents. So we're walking throughout the world with all these major talents which are of extreme value, 
but we're thinking, you know, there's no way for me to make money. Do you see how funny that is? If we're going to take this from a higher perspective, we would understand that your, your ability to make money is not dependent upon this particular job or this particular deal or real estate in general. If you can pull your teeth out of that idea that the only way you're going to make money is if this deal closes or if this client participates in whatever you want to participate in or if my career in sales works out, then you're not, it's not as desperate. So when we really need something, we start worrying about it not happening. That's, that's the issue with like intense desire. When we have intense desire, but we don't simultaneously know that we create our own reality, then we get this, this thing going where we start to worry about what might happen if it doesn't work out. And that worry starts to mass and amass and amass. So what we're doing by, by trying to become okay with it not working, that means if you really want a deal to close, I super want this deal to close, right? It has to close. I got to pay my bills, right? You find a way to think about the scenario, to become okay with the scenario of it falling apart. And right. the reason that we do that is because by doing that, you're less worried about it. You're less preoccupied about it. You're prepared for it. And so your mind is not fixated on it. And when your mind's not fixated on something, you're not creating it. You've, in essence, caused yourself to release resistance to the worst case scenario. And so you're no longer a match to the worst case scenario. Well, what are those other avenues of income that could just happen when somebody's mindset is, this is my only job, and they can't wrap their head around any other options coming into their life? Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> we have to look at ourselves in terms of skill, like a skill or a talent or a, an ability. And that that's really what we're getting paid for. It's not the job we're doing. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, like let's say I, my job might be that I'm a, a manager, right? I might be a manager of a company. So I'm saying my, my money needs to come through my job. And if my job fails, I have no money. And so I'm screwed. Because that's the only avenue I'm recognizing for my abundance. But the reality is the skill set that makes me a manager or a good one, let's hope, um, <laughs> still stays with me when I leave that job. So that means that there are a bunch of other opportunities that could see value in that particular skill set that I have. And I could use that in many different ways, not just in this particular avenue. So so let's let's say me, for example. Let's just take me, for example, because it's an interesting kind of an idea. So let's say that I, I'm in real estate. I'm very good at articulating. And so when somebody wants to know the ins and outs of this particular house, I can convey that to them no matter who it is. Right. I am good at switching my language up so as to make people understand and feel confident because of my confident attitude and the way that I speak. People go, oh, I'm going to be taken care of. I suck at sales. I don't want to promote myself. Why the hell would I want to do that? So, so let's just say I've, got, I've still got that skill set. You take me out of, out of real estate, I still have that skill set. What other avenues would be good with that skill set? Well, we can all see this is what I'm doing today. I'm a spiritual teacher. I talk to large audiences of people. It's the same skill set. Mm -hmm. I'm making 10 times the money that I was making in real estate mm -hmm. using the same skill set. Because what people are, are paying cash money value for is my skill set. And my skill set is not only things you learn. I did not learn this. This is a born thing. Mm -hmm. So most of our, and I took, I took it for granted. See? <laughs> so, so. This is how everyone works. Most people who are good at things, they take it for granted. Let's say you're really good at bringing people together, right? Mm -hmm. I'm super good at bringing people together so they can collaborate. Mm -hmm. Guess what? You just defined the perfect manager. Maybe you don't need to be like, you know, doing real estate. Maybe you could be out there and if everything falls apart with real estate, you could be having a job at a great place as a manager because you can bring colleagues together. That's your major talent, right? Mm -hmm. The point is, is that like if you can see yourself as the one that has value instead of the job as being the thing that has value, then no matter where you go, you have a avenue to create abundance. Makes sense. That mindset switch is completely essential because then our ability to make money is in our hands and it's not in the hands of the client. Right, right. I often tell people that the money is just a byproduct of, yep. you know, staying centered, you know, 
true to the self, but not everybody understands that. Not around here anyway. Um, So interesting. I think there is a whole lot of people in real estate that should not be in real estate. Right. There are a lot. But I'm trying to uh, bring a new dimension to it. You know what I mean? Because Mm -hmm. I have no attachment to money. Thank God. You know, and I try to. Are you serious? Well. Because, like, I've never met one person on earth, not even myself, that has no attachment to money. All right. Maybe I do have an attachment to money. (laughs) (laughs) But maybe it's not as strong as it once was. It doesn't have that chokehold on me that it used to have. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So it, I can operate from a place of of love for most of the time. Yeah. And, you know, that's probably a better answer. So have you noticed that your abundance started to flow when you operated from that space instead? Oh, my God. Like tenfold. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so that's what makes – I get the goosebumps. Like this is like my passion is I get so amped up over it. <laughs> and probably because you're on the screen and you're <laughs> like <laughs> blasting energy. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so, yeah, so, all right, let me read one question. Like, how would you, do you have any ideas about spiritual marketing? I don't understand the concept of spiritual marketing, so you explain it to me. Like, um, how to promote yourself in a so-called sales position um, or in real estate. I know that's kind of a, is that an oxymoron? Why? I don't know, sales and and spirituality. It just seems so, but there's a lot of spiritual people that are selling things and trying to make money that way. Oh yeah, it's not, no, sales and, sales and spirituality is not an oxymoron, it's not a contradiction. In fact, this is one of the major things I feel like people need to understand is that business is not seen as separate from spirituality. Right. Business is an Thank expression you. of spirituality. Okay, see, that's why you're here because you can articulate it way better than I can so I can watch this video 500 times. <laughs> <laughs> um, but exactly. So how, it's the one life. It's the one, it, it's, not, it's not a separate life. It's not like, oh my, I hear people say this a lot, my spiritual life and my business life, my clients, I don't know how to merge the two. And, and so that's, hence this video. Okay, so what, what issue are people having merging them? Like what is it, we have to, this is of course going to be specific based on the person. Mm, like what, what, exactly. what is it about spirituality that you want to bring to your business? What is lacking in your current business? Right, I think it's maybe just the fear of just being open. <laughs> like your videos on openness and just letting it <laughs> all hang out there. I mean, that's a very scary place to be, especially when you're identifying it with money. The most successful, this is super important, and I'm going to hit, hit you with it. Okay, ready? All right. I'm going to write it down. The wealthiest people on this planet and the people who are the most successful have one thing in common. They have what society would call a narcissistic view of self. It's not actually narcissism. We just call it that. But what it is is that most people who are experiencing an extreme level of success do not think about themselves in terms of lack. Their attitude is more the attitude of the flamboyant artist that takes a crap, wipes it on the walls, and says, isn't it beautiful? And that 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 level of confidence attracts people. There is nothing in your business that's going to attract people more than confidence. So the person who's out there trying really hard to make sure that all the clients like them (laughs) seems unstable. And and when I when I am in and and we got to understand in a lot of these business situations, the client is in essence trusting you. That's what they're doing. Let's boil it down to basic psychology. Mm -hmm. I'm a client. I'm trusting you. A lot of times with a crap ton of money, right? Mm -hmm. I don't really care whether you're nice as much as I care that I can trust you. And like we might say, well, those things are the same. No, they aren't. There's a lot of nice people who are not, I guess they're not like the strong personality types that you would trust with that kind of a transaction, right? Mm -hmm. 
So if you're the kind of person who says, like the way that I like to describe it is this. You might have a major issue, right? Like, like, like let's come up with a major issue. Um, I, okay, what if, what's mine? Mm -hmm. I'll come up with my own. I have a major issue with being emotionally unstable. Let's go there. So I'm the kind of person who has huge reactions to things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? So if I'm a person who's like really insecure about that, then it's no longer okay that I have that issue. But if I walk into a room, open my arms, and say, guess what, everyone? I'm emotionally unstable. Oh my gosh, deal with it. People go, wow, that's a confident person. She's confident about her insecurity. Mm. Right? Right. So we can't forget that when we're dealing with business, we are still dealing with people's basic psychology. And if you're the kind of person who's willing to put yourself out there and have this develop this attitude of like, well, look, what I'm creating is awesome. Really, you shouldn't be selling anything unless you think that. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Why sell something if you don't think it's awesome? Mm -hmm. But if you do think it's awesome and you're out there saying, look, this is awesome, then people are going to buy it, regardless of whether the product's actually good or not. What they're buying is the confidence. Right. Definitely. I mean, scrunchies are retarded. Let's just be honest. Let's go back to the 80s. Yeah. Scrunchies are retarded. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but they did so well it was ridiculous. Why? Because of the first person who wore one and said, awesome. Mm -hmm. People went, ooh, confidence. Mm -hmm. Ooh, self. If you're a strong personality type or if you, pr if you promote who you really are, then you represent a good bet. Mm. And, they're not and in sales, super important, especially house sales, because it means you're not going to buckle under other people's pressure. Mm. Which is kind of where I feel like I'm at. And so it's like, there aren't a lot of real through. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say that. I mean. Maybe you should. Speak your truth. Oh, gosh. I'm so afraid of what they're going to think of me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, how, how do you change the mindset? That mindset. Uh, how do you, they, the person has to want to change that mindset, that old dog-eat-dog -dog world mindset that I have to pretend to be something that I'm not so you'll like me so I can sell your house, you know, and hold my breath the whole time and it's not a true interaction. Like it's, it's not operating out of the heart space, right, which is what I try to do most of the time. Mm-hmm. So maybe we can talk about that too. Yeah, so you're talking about how to go downstream in an upstream business. First of all, I want to get rid of one of your beliefs. You ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. The belief is that there's something that's unspiritual about competition. Mm. There, is, there is some serious merit to competition. In fact, so much fascination is held outside of this dimension for competition. I mean, it's a joke, but people say, what are people outside of this dimension, non-physical beings, angels, whatever, you know, <laughs> what are they the most fascinated about? Right. Sports. Really? Why? Because it's so interesting when you understand the concept of oneness to watch you come up against you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because of what that does for expansion. You, if you really take a look at the, the meat of most of our amazing accomplishments, there was always competition involved. We, were, we did not understand, of course, through this competition, which is the major difference, that we're competing against ourselves. Ultimately, you are me. So if, I, if you and I are competing, I'm competing against me. When we lose this truth, competition can turn to a shadow thing, right? Where now my performance has to do with my worth or lack thereof. Now that's not an issue with competition, that's an issue with self-worth and focus. But when it comes to competition, when I am, am trying to raise the bar on what was done previously or what is being done currently in a soccer game, for example, then I am now stretching myself to my furthest capacity. I can't know how far I can go. You know? And so like competition is what is, if you take a real look at it, competition is what is extending that line. That's why it's like the four-minute mile, forever and ever, for years and years. No one breaks the four-minute mile. The first time someone does, ten people do the same week. Why? Because they know it's possible. 
So, so by competing, we are actually becoming more aware of what we truly are and can be. So competition is not only awesome, but for some people it's necessary. Did you know that? No, I, this is fascinating. There's a bunch of personality types out there. I mean, it's not it's not like the super most common, but there are a lot in business especially. There is a lot of personality types that are drawn to that where they literally need competition. Where competition is one of their greatest strengths. Where where literally you're not going to see the best come out of this person unless they have something to try themselves against. And their actually their yeah, and their greatest joy is that. And in fact, if this is the major issue we, we have again, which is like we like to make blanket statements and say this is not spiritual, this is spiritual, this is good, this is bad. And a lot of people get sort of drowned in that because we are looking at people, some people who thrive on competition to the positive degree, not the negative degree, where I need to win and you're below me and you're less than and you're greater than. But I mean these people thrive on competition and we're telling them you can't be competitive, competitive is a negative personality trait. When in reality the best that you would ever see from that person is if you said, look, you, you're like real good with competition so you should be looking for it. That means when you create something, go look for the best that's ever been done and do better. Mm. That person will thrive on it, they will eat it for breakfast because that's their <laughs> personality. Right. Okay. See, I'm thinking competition in the sense of, you know, if I know that a realtor is working on getting somebody's house on the market as a listing, I'm not going to go near that listing because I don't want to, is that competition? Like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, they have a realtor unless they contact me, you know what I mean? I don't see that as competition. So you vibrationally, where you, this is an English syntax issue because that is not competition. What okay. that is, is you feeling like you can't manifest your own resources without affecting other people you have to take from others. That is actually lack mentality. That's not competition. It's not really me. It's, it's other, like, it used to be me. Like, I, <laughs> you know, it's, it's what I... Like, for example, I do a lot of advertising on Zillow, and mm -hmm. so I get a lot of buyers that call in. And if they say, I say, well, are you working with a realtor? And it, it, do you have an agent that you're already working with? And if they say, yes, they do, I say, okay, well, you should really call your agent, you know, and they say, okay, because they're already working with somebody. So, and then I teach that to the next person. So, I mean, is that, it, if I had you know, said something different, like, <clears throat> to try and work with that person, then is that, see, that's, like, considered bad in the real estate world. Like, that's considered, like, non, not ethical, which I have a huge issue with all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Rules. I'm not a rule person. I'm a, like, yeah, so the question I would ask you is, why the hell did you get into sales if this is the kind of personality that we have? Well, I did it like 10 years ago when I wasn't this person. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I won't be <laughs> eventually. But, I mean, I do enjoy the aspect of helping people. I love, you know, working with certain people of my choosing, which I do. <laughs> Is that okay to say? I mean, anything. yeah, it's just that all signs are pointing towards this is not what I want to be doing with my life. Whoa. That's crazy. Mm hmm. Because that's such, such an identity thing. Oh, yeah, but every single skill you learned here is going to apply to what you're going to do next. Right. Which maybe it's, it's heading towards some sort of teaching. Do you want to know something funny? Yeah, I would. I would like that. There are a great many people who are in real estate who actually love that process. It excites them what to have to, to have to do what you're calling competing, but to have to basically defend your resources and be the best so if somebody doesn't hawk your clients. <laughs> it actually enjoys them. It makes that makes them well, not enjoys. It makes them happy. I mean that's that's what they thrive on. They actually feel alive. They lose time even. See, I thrive on right now building people up and watching them build their business 
and being a part of it. That yeah, exactly. So this is exactly, you already know what you're meant to be doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're in a position where you're ready to sort of transition. Right. I think so. And so, and a lot of this video too was for thinking of other people, like, so they, so they can watch it and learn coming from you because you're amazing and <laughs> have a great message and can explain things way better than I can spiritually, you know? And like, I don't know. Um, okay, so like this last question here. This would be, I think, a good question. Can you explain how the universe supports a blend of spiritual living and business? So how are the energies of the universe supporting this idea of doing business differently today versus prior to 2012? Like, you know how the energies are shifting and I, I know you know, so. Well, the, the universe, so first we have to understand, like I said earlier, that business is not seen by the universe as separate from spirituality. We like to, we are, the humans are the ones that draw the distinction between temporal world and non-physical spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So your business is a spiritual expression. If you were a plumber, that's a spiritual expression. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about spirituality, that means we're usually, we're usually drawing on our concepts of spiritual means moral, spiritual means these things. So let's play that game. So if spiritual means, which it doesn't necessarily, but let's say spiritual means um, that holding the awareness that we are all one then obviously the universe would be in support of the progression of business in the direction of not harming anyone else. Mm -hmm. That's the number one change you're going to really see in the world right now is that the businesses that have what we call inappropriate morals, what it is is just, you know, they're like a, it's like an ignorant moral, it's a lack of awareness to be the kind of business who capitalizes off of anything that doesn't benefit the basic person. So, okay, we'll start here. Capitalism is awesome. Most people don't know that capitalism is awesome because they don't understand what capitalism is. When we think of capitalism, we think of your basic pyramid scheme where you've got people on bottom and one, you know, the very 1% on top that are like capitalizing on everyone else in a negative way. That's actually not true capitalism. To capitalize means to, to it's basically to, to reach the furthermost extent of something's capacity. So a capitalist takes something and makes it the highest expression of itself, right? <clears throat> so you can't be a true capitalist and harm the people on the base of the pyramid. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, think about it this way, if you are creating something that is going to harm other people, pretty soon you can't call yourself a capitalist. Why? Because you've killed off your own clients. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so like, so the people who are call, who are like we're looking at and calling capitalists are not capitalists. A true capitalist would, because they have that higher perspective, understand that you cannot harm the legs you stand on, and so you could not create anything that did not benefit the totality, not just yourself, the totality. So, so basically, we're gonna business. You're gonna see it evolve, and and the spiritual aspect of this. Earth United Consciousness is supporting this movement where basically you're not going to see um, businesses which can, they literally can't prioritize their own individual, this is me and my family's money over the well-being of the totality of the planet because they will see them as integral. Mm -hmm. So there will be no support left for any of these products that, that do it. harm. I've seen it. I've seen I've seen it recently. It's mind blowing how like the the old is dying off. It's yep. no longer supported. And yeah. so and so what I do with these Zillow leads, right, is when they come in, I, I have this team where I'm giving them the the buyers to work with and trying to, you know, bring them up. It's like you know, it's I feel like it's a beautiful thing. You know, um but maybe I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm taking it the wrong way. Maybe, I'm like, maybe my dream isn't coming true. <laughs> maybe it's, maybe I'm not supposed to be doing all of this. I, I don't know. I, I mean, like, I feel like the new energies are supporting like a, 
giving sort of always because that's yeah. abundance yeah right i love to give i do i love to and give. when you do that you'll get more in return yes exactly. because you're addressing resources like money as an infinite resource that is always flowing like air mm -hmm. the best mentality you could develop as a business person is that money is air you breathe it in you breathe it out it's always available mm. right and money is like an exchange of energy yeah that's all right Exactly. And so that's kind of, you know, it's hard for people to wrap their head around this. Like, I have signed up to be the weird one out here. Like, so, so I'm weird, you know, but that's fine. I'm willing to be that, you know. Yeah, my husband's weirder than me, though. So. <laughs> um, okay. What you're also going to see with the progression of of these um, businesses is a lot more trend towards personal motivation. Mm. So a lot of times what you're noticing is that somebody gets put into a, a business and they're like a part of a machine. They're not an innovator. And the companies that you're seeing right now, this is an interesting thing. So like you're basically like, I think one of the questions that was percolating earlier was as somebody who's in like your position, somebody who's in a managerial position or a position where you're you're helping other people to come into to themselves within a workplace, yeah. we have to have a very deep understanding of intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. Mm. So you put monkeys in the cage, right? This is what, what gave rise to this whole entire idea about intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. There was monkeys in the cage, you give them puzzles, right? And they do the puzzles. Absolutely fascinated. So the scientists start thinking, if we feed these, these monkeys bananas every time they finish the puzzle, um, are they going to be more motivated to do the puzzle? Are they going to do it faster? What they found is the performance went down. Right? Way down. Not only that, they stopped doing the puzzles. Turns out when you give them an extrinsic motivator, like a banana, and the human extrinsic motivator is money, suddenly the person loses their, their desire their intrinsic desire to do something, their intrinsic motivation dissipates. Mm. So what you're finding now is that the best companies in the world, the ones that are the very most successful, they have adopted this idea of intrinsic motivation. And so some of them, they have hired a team of people who never have to show up at the office ever. Their entire job is just to create what they want to create. Other businesses are coming up with ideas like one day a week is a you decide what you think needs to be done for the company week. And some of their best inventions have come out of those days. Wow. Yeah. So That's and awesome. they will never go back. It's not you will never there has not been one report of any company that has been started that has done this that has said that they would ever give it up. Because what they're finding out is you get to find out what people are truly good at. So we may have some guy over in accounting who's sitting down at the desk doing what we've told him to do, but the one day we tell him to do what he wants to do, he does a better job than he's ever done. Not only that, he revolutionizes the entire company. Mm. So we need to be shifting to intrinsic motivation and giving people a lot more freedom, not telling them what to do, but letting them come up with it themselves because then they have an internal motivation. You don't have to be that person on their back, the manager on the back. Right. You don't have to be doing anything. They are going to come to work. They're going to show up on purpose not because of the paycheck and you're gonna have a way better company, a way better business, way better feeling staff because of it. That's fascinating. You're absolutely right. I mean I sit behind my, I, I'm home a lot. Just in, I can understand, I can identify with that, that freedom. You know I used to work for big corporate -y like um, Cold Bull Banker and Remax and even even being an independent contractor and you're supposed to have your freedom it still isn't freedom because there's all these rules and regulations that you have to abide by and you know the place I'm at now it's not so much more free you know which so is I, the natural state for the human right <laughs> so anytime you argue with a natural state you're gonna you're gonna suffer and your business is gonna suffer right right like I don't even want to and a lot of times I don't even feel like it's business. I feel like it's life and it's fun and it's... You know, this is what's so funny. People sometimes will ask, as a sort of psychological spiritual guide, what is it that you have to tell us about business? And we want to know the reality. When you're dealing with business, you're dealing with people. And at people's hearts is psychology and spirituality. If you do not understand a human, you can't run a business. Right. <laughs> That's like, well said. That's so true. 
That's so true. And, you know, I don't want to sell anyone under the bus or throw anyone under the bus, but, um, <laughs> um, you know, I, I see... I see people that own big companies that treat their employees like shit. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I can see, I can just see things starting to crumble now as if like, uh, not before, you know? So going back to the energies of now, like they're just universal energies are supporting, supporting us. Like you were saying, yes. right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's not the funny. What I want people to understand too is that those those people who are owning those kinds of businesses that are crumbling because they treat people like shit. We have this. We we as victim victims to this sort of circumstance like to tell ourselves the story that they're just having a heyday while we're suffering under their wrath. The reality is, pain consciousness is what causes that type of mentality. That person's living a miserable effing life. Why do I know this? Because they come to me. I mean, the reality is, when you set yourself up in a position like I have, now suddenly a lot of the CEOs around the world are flying in, saying, I don't know, I'm feeling empty. Mm -hmm. The reality is, their wife, if they can't treat their employees nicely, they can't treat their wife nicely either. So right. they're having an issue with that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. I love to see this change. I really do. Me it's too, and it's absolutely wonderful. They don't like being that way. Right. Nobody likes being that way. Right. And it's not natural. We end up that way because of thinking that this is a pain consciousness state. We get that way because because we tell the story that it's a dog eat dog world. We keep telling that story, so it will be. So Reality you, is you can be a competitive world and not be a dog eat dog world. In fact we can treat competition like it makes us better and not wrap it in with self worth. We could do that. We could separate competition out from self worth and have it have nothing to do with your capability or your worth or anything. So I guess the how to that would be to change your perspective. Everything's about changing perspective and it's irritating. I mean most people would rather me give them a pill or would rather me give them a process that works immediately overnight but the reality is perspective is shifting all the time we're just not really aware of it and perspective is easy to switch but everything we do is shifting perspective. Just watching this video shifts perspective. Exactly. <laughs> hey, you know I had just to let you know I talk about shift perspective and self-love I had watched a video of yours and and I'll just throw this out there you know because I struggle with you know self-love and <laughs> you know all that all that that stuff I mean I you know the body image that sort of thing self-hate all that and um the one thing that I really took seriously because I was like I'm so sick of feeling like this is that I recorded my own voice and about the things that I could could relate to that I did feel about myself that I love you know that feel true and then I listened to it before bed a few times and I was blown away at it's like the reprogramming and just something about my own voice unbelievable like yeah. that's you know you help so many people you don't even know I mean you probably <laughs> do know you know seriously even just coming back from the Atlanta workshop I talked to like a handful of people and they're all like can't get enough of the YouTube channel they're like not working just watching YouTube <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah that's amazing so I, I guess I guess like I guess it's just an individual thing where people just have to the people want have to want to change right like I mean oh. I would actually word it differently. People have to want to love themselves enough that they're willing to allow themselves to be completely who they are. Because even when they say you have to want to change yourself, even that's like that's like almost we should just re we should just erase that sentence and say people should hate themselves. What it what it, it we're not looking for people to want to change. We're looking for people to want to accept the totality of who they are and who realize that living the world like in the world the way that they've been living is so painful that they can't do it anymore. So that is what calls us to say you know what see it's not like that I wouldn't call that changing yourself I'd call that becoming more of who you really are so a person says you know what I I don't I, I don't like sales <laughs> I'm the kind of person who wants to you know do this and then they do it or somebody saying you know what I realize everyone's telling me the competition is a bad thing but I absolutely love it that's me becoming more of myself instead of changing 
Right. And if we became more of ourselves, a lot of these things we're looking at and saying need to change would change on their own. They change of their own accord. We don't even need to focus on that. It's kind of like root or branch, you know? Right. Effortlessly. Yeah. Effortlessly. Yeah, that's, that's why like a, lot, a great many of us who are uh, game changers here basically on planet Earth are not going to, you're not going to watch us focus on like the minutia. You're not going to watch us. People ask me that all the time. Teal, why aren't you focusing on the dogs? This is a good one I got, okay? <laughs> why aren't you focusing on the dogs? Because there are dogs that are getting killed over in other countries and eaten for meat and stuff like that. Why are you just only focused on people? My response to them was, because the people are the problem. If you make happy people, there's never a, a thought that will occur in their brain, I'm going to kill a dog. Mm -hmm. So the problem is not the dogs. I could rescue all the dogs I want. Why? But like, Look at, look at the, how this works. I could rescue 5,000 dogs or one person that simultaneously rec like rec saves those dogs. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right. And I don't even see the saving. It's like, that's what's so great about this career. Like, you don't need to change somebody. You don't need to save somebody. You need to enable them to come into the awareness of their true self. Right. <laughs> right. So then they can hear their higher self? Yeah, but it's playing it backwards, and I think that what it is, instead of wanting to change, we don't need people to be wanting to change, we need them to be willing to risk. So, and that's the major fear, it's like, are you, are, did you come here to live this life carefully? I can tell you that none of us came here to live this life carefully, and so when that's the case, we are able to make these kinds of risks which we're afraid of. The risk of, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going to lose all my goddamn clients if I, be, if I am who I really am, if I put myself out there as who I totally am, right? But the, we got to be willing to take that risk, to shift it completely on its head and play it backwards where we're saying, you know what, I'm going to let myself be exactly who I am and promote myself exactly who I am and then let my clientele come to me. Mm, that's what and I feel like I do. And sometimes my old thinking is like, oh, yeah. you shouldn't be, you really should be something. Well, then up. watch this video. See, that's the thing. Like, we've got all the tools we need. Yeah. You don't need to do it alone. So it's not like you have to be out there constantly thinking positive thoughts. If you have <laughs> access to a video like this and it makes you feel better about being yourself, put on the damn video. Oh, I will. <laughs> I've, been, I've been stalking your ass to get this video. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing, and you'll probably relate to this. Way back in the 90s, the issue of gay versus straight was like even worse than it is today. Even though it's more in the public eye today, there was a lot more prejudice back when, especially in states like I live in. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so basically there is this, this guy in Salt Lake City, who's the closest city, so most of the real estate focus is there, basically. This, this guy was a gay and also a real estate agent. He was like, you know what, I can't let myself, I can't let myself be gay because like if they know I'm gay, they're not going to hire me because they're Mormon, right? Ooh. So yeah. he's panicking. That's an ass, the same aspect. Your fear about going out there as a spiritual person or some other people watching this video fear about going out there and being their true self, right? This is the same one that he had. If I go out and sort of make it known that I'm gay, then that's not, they're not going to like me. So he went about the wrong, you know, the opposite way. I'm trying to get clients by figuring out what they want. He like changed the car he drove so he could see more straight, wore clothes so he could see more straight, ended up actually getting married so that he could tell his clients, because he was a very successful real estate agent at this time, ended up getting married so he could tell his clients that he had a, a wife. Of course, he has a midlife crisis, decides that he's inhibiting himself, he can't deal with it. So he decides, you know, whatever happens, it's not worth not being me. So he decides to go out there and say, yeah, I'm gay. Not only that, I'm a gay real estate agent. Guess what happens? Yeah. He is now one of the most sought after real estate agents in the entire Salt Lake area. In fact, every gay person hires him to do their house. And so it's a, it's a major lesson. It's that, look, your, your demographic is out there. Mm -hmm. Give them an opportunity to find you for once, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> The manifestation process, too, right now is, like, freaking instant. Yeah. It, it, it's scary, right? It's <laughs> really scary. I'm like, whoa, like, how did I, you know, I've been thinking about million-dollar properties, but working with like-minded people, that's been mm -hmm. my intention. And sure enough, it's been happening. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's mind-blowing. Down to my husband, you know, manifesting, I don't know, one of his friends dropping up some cool rocks so he can make organite and they show up and like bring cool rocks it's just fascinating mm -hmm. 
you know? So, um, yeah, but then there's the haters too, you know? Like, I've been getting some haters lately and, and, and then it makes me second guess myself. Like, people that are like, oh, you're crazy or, or the judgment. Like, and I Join the club. Oh, yeah, right. I know. You seem so strong with that though, you know? And Yeah, that's because you're catching me in an upswing. Yeah. See, the reality, the reality is most people don't get to see the panic attacks. Most people, and I mean, I'm trying to be more in the public eye about this because it's not good to have the velvet curtain, but the reality is when I first look at those things, what do you think I'm doing? I'm closing the computer screen, I'm sitting under my bed covers, and I'm saying, do I do any good? I should quit. I should just quit. I'm not doing anything. These people think I'm a total piece of shit. I can't convince them otherwise. What the hell am I going to do? Do you see the spiral? Yeah. That's what it looks like an hour ago. No, but it's not true. But this is the thing, like, once you, what shifts is that once you develop, like, a, a wider capability of seeing the bigger picture, then you can talk yourself out of that quicker than most people. So it, what it looks like is, like, you get these big waves with people, but, like, the, it's sort of like the, the more spiritually progressed you get, the faster that happens. You look more bipolar. <laughs> Rock, I just got a real big lesson yesterday, and, I, and I'm just throwing this out there. I mean, it, like my, my family of origin is they're now seeing me as the loony bin, like the crazy, I know they think I'm nuts and I, it just hit me. Like I, it was an epiphany. Like I never realized, I thought we were so cool and I thought that <laughs> they really enjoyed what I had to say. <laughs> and meanwhile, they, not at all, you know, like, so it's just, it, it ruffles you. It, it, I mean, it. Yeah, I was crying yesterday, you know, but today's a better day, and I'm just staying true to myself and just, just. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? I feel like in the spiritual community, we harbor this absolute retarded belief that we should not be affected. Right. Yeah. You know what I call someone who's not affected? A sociopath. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're not going to learn anything unless you get affected. Let this earth move you. Maybe it sucks sometimes. Wish you didn't come here to be removed from the experience. Mm -hmm. Right. And then it's like, you know, there's so many different, more spiritual places on the earth than here. So maybe we should just move in. I'm doing it. I decided to do it. We got to oh. do it when we're ready, but I'm in the mood. Cool. Yeah. We all reach a point where we're like, you know, we got to gravitate towards what really feels good, whether that's a different job or a different type of doing the job we're already doing or a different community or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's all a process of allowing the self. Mm, allowing. See, and you're not, you're not going to allow the self unless you know what you aren't, see. And so when, when people, this is my favorite thing to realize and usually gets me on my downward spiral about haters, is the fact that I can't know unless I'm affected by somebody else's opinion of me, I can't really know what I am and what I'm not. They clarify exactly what I stand for. They clarify me completely. Mm, that's a good way of looking at it. And then I know what I want. Mm -hmm. And then I know what I don't want. And then I know what I am and what I'm not, very clearly. And so, and I feel like to know yourself is perhaps the best state that a person can be in. Mm. It's to be completely fully present with yourself. No dark corners lurking that you're trying to avoid. So what would you tell people, you know, back to my, my entourage of cute little realtors. Got this one girl in mind. She's so cute. I just love her so much. And she's just starting out and she's like a sponge and she's really interested in everything. And it's like, like, like the how, like, how do you, I guess how do you how do you delve into spirituality and how do you how how do you do it how do you go towards maybe just by starting to watch a video right yeah I mean, I, I feel like we're going in the direction of spirituality no matter what in our life it's not that's the sort of thing people say how do I become more spiritual and my sort of joke is you already are like you are a spiritual being whether you like to admit it or not you are on the spiritual path regardless of whether you are aware that that's a spiritual path or not you don't need to call it by the name spiritual you are on a spiritual path good answer 
<laughs> so answer. so I, I would trust that her life is going to bring her to exactly what she needs to examine every single time, whether that's through a spiritual teacher or whether it's through a husband or a partner or whether it's through a business transaction. She is spiritually being lined up with her soul's progression. And I don't really necessarily need to do anything. No. Which is my big epiphany. <laughs> I can just do what I do and let people be who they are. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because that's all we're trying to do anyway. So if we if we have something in our mind that we want them to become, that's not who they are. That's who we want them to be. Right. And the more that I am authentically myself, the more it gives permission for other people to be. Yes, and then you won't want other people to be any other way. Right. Than how they are. Right. Right. We don't. We only want other people to be how we want them to be when we have not given ourselves permission to be how we really are. True that too. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, this has been a great interview. I, I there's like no need to like. I have all these questions, but I mean, I think is our hour up. Two twenty-two. Nice timing. <laughs> Four twenty-two. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. So um, let me just make sure we. Yeah, it's time. So I just want to thank you so very much for doing this with me. And, thank you. Um, no, I love you. And, uh, <laughs> oh, and one more thing. So anyone watching this in my area, we're we're setting up you coming to Boston too. So okay. if any if anybody wants to see Teal, you got to come see Teal. She's amazing. So um, this is Teal. So thank you again, and. Um, I love you. I love you too. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. See you. Bye. <laughs>